Good morning, good people. Are you there? Eh, there's no rest for the goodly and the godly. I'm not saying the other word. I just had a cup of my coffee while I'm waiting for you. Bless you. Busy mornings, aren't they? They are. <laughs> Very busy mornings. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's all right. We're just looking at the meat. Sorry, Lynn Faulkner, if you're there. Just looking at the meat and what's going on. Bless. How are we? All good? I hope. Here you are. Oh, look at smiley faces there. Isn't it? Because smiley faces, let me just shut this door. Shut the noise out. That's it. That's better. That's better. Hey, we've had a cracking little service this morning. Um, those of you that were part of it, uh, whether that was by Zoom or by telephone, was a good time. Oh, so, yeah. Oh, yes, I'm doing this one too. Oh, definitely. Yes. Yeah, we're going to keep this going come what may. I think um, even throughout all the other uh, stuff that we will or will not be doing or doing in a different way, this will be here um, for as long as, I think. Good morning, Eileen Brown again. Good morning, Lynn Faulkner. <laughs> Hello again, Sharon. It was a good time, I thought. Um, not too many glitches. Uh, there might have been me um, at the end. Did you get me there on my vision? Because that was fab, wasn't it? I played it again while I was making my coffee. Oh, it's fab. Yeah, brilliant sermon. Absolutely. I couldn't agree more, Lynn. Just absolutely fabulous. And I think that so relevant to us at this moment in time because we do need to be thinking very carefully how we're going to knit back together again, as it was, doesn't it? First and foremost, of course, it's knitting us back together as a community, as our our community, and then taking that solid community into the community or inviting them in, as it were. Yes, good morning, Hyacinth. Good to see you. It's good that Lynn <laughs> Hewitt got on this morning, Zooming. Yeah, it's more and more people's faces, more and more people are tuning in. It just... Great. We don't mind you gate crashing at all, Sharon. You just carry on gate crashing, girl. That's absolutely fine. <laughs> yeah, it's the delivery. The, the practicals are coming together, aren't they? I mean, you know, it was me this morning, you know. And um, yeah, I mean, what we've got to do is think about what what is our vision, haven't we? And what is what it means for us. This is just the thoughts, the remnants of. Um, uh, the thoughts from this morning's service. So, good morning, Tracy Alty. Good to see you as well. When you get that recording of that service, Tracy Alty, you need to have a look and see because it's really very, very, very powerful sermon this morning. Yeah. It, it, and that's what we're about, isn't it, Pat? You know, we don't we don't claim professionalism or perfectionism. What we do claim is Jesusism, with all of our hearts, our minds, and souls. Jesusism, hey, it's our Claire. Good morning again, Linda Bichetto. and Kathy's on too. Good morning, Kathy. Praying for your head, Kathy, because I know you've had a bit of uh, a bit of a, um, a, a to do. Haven't you? Bless you. Please hold Kathy May in your prayers because she suffers a lot with her head. Uh, and then I can't remember what it's called, but it's more, 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 more severe and serious than um, migraines. I think it's probably, um, I can't remember what it is, Kathy. I'm not even going to try and remember what it is. So good morning, Marion Barlow. And good morning, our Claire as well. Somebody's burning the sausages. Somebody's burning the sausages. Honestly. <laughs> Never mind. It's fine. They'll eat burnt sausages as well, won't they? Or not, as the case may be. 
<laughs> How are we all then? Are we all right? Huh? Hey, got a goodly number this morning. Not that. Oh, good morning, Catherine Mann. And June Smith, good morning again. We're not we're not bothered about numbers and how many or but it's lovely that you're all here pressing buttons because it's not about numbers, it's about connectivity, isn't it? It's about us connecting together. And um oh I know um uh, this was this is new to me. Uh, so it was someone else's previously. Uh, so and uh, my collar's really quite old now. I'm looking for someone to actually make me some more. And my cardigan's from way back, but you know you can swap and change things around, can't you? And it makes it a bit. Um, it's a bit good. So um, yes, if you so let me just go back uh, and have a little look. What was there? Oh, I knew you'd love that service, Linda Bachetto. I know it's the first time you've been involved and now uh, you can carry on, can't you? 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning until further notice. Because I don't know about you, but I didn't know what what that was all about at 5 o'clock the other night. I couldn't make any tail of it. And I tried really hard to concentrate, but I, I don't know. It was just... Was it, was it just about figures and about telling us how serious it is? I think we've got that message, or at least the majority of us have. I know there's still the chosen few, but, the, you know, most of us, I think, are, are seeing the seriousness of the situation and trying our best. I mean, I was supposed to go to Cathy's last night as well for my dinner, and I never got there because we had to cancel. Apart from the fact that she's not well, but hey, bless. It's all right, isn't it? Just think how fantastic it's going to be when we all do meet up again and we can hug and kiss and all those wonderful things that we've missed, isn't it? So it is. Well, for those of you that don't know who I am, La la. Uh, my name's Wendy Murphy. I'm minister at St Paul's at the bottom of Carlton Hill. Yep, the one, the big building that faces Tesco's. And it's Sunday and it's the 24th of January. And following our 10 o'clock Zoom service, which was most excellent this morning, I might say, thank you. Great word, great word from Philip. Thank you, Philip. So here I am, here I am, even following on from that, because now it's time to chat to you, lovely lot. So good morning, she says, mid-flow, being on all of eight minutes, just decide to say good morning. So, uh, and now it's time to for us to have our little chit-chat together, keeping up, or should I say, bearing up. It's quite murder, isn't it, Really? I'm as much in a quandary as you are, folks, really. And it's hard to think about what to do next, isn't it? When you've got nowhere to go and no one to see. And I've tried, on Friday, I tried doing two dog walks because you'll know our Ruby, um, she's coming up 15. So she wasn't impressed. She, she likes it. She likes to go out, but she likes little short ones now, which is no good. For me, when I'm wanting a thought process, right? So 20 minutes, you barely touch the thought process. But uh, I took her round. I took her from this house round to uh, Gedlin, where after the co-op um, to um, the little shops on Westdale Lane there the, on Friday. I had a delivery to make and um, I, I went there and... Um, it, she, she went limping, bless her, on Friday night. So I felt really bad about that. So I didn't take her out yesterday. We just did a little tiny one around the church. And that's what I've done this morning. So I will take her. But it's not really very good for me. That isn't. I, I don't know. Because uh, I'm not a sitter and a thinker. I have an idea. I have a good idea and a good idea. And I go with it. Um and, um, you know, and, and so for me, that's where all my, as you know, where all my thinking is done. And Sundays always used to be a family day. Uh, everyone would come round, as you know, massive dinners would be prepared. Um, 22 and 24 people, you know, all good. We'd have a fold up table stuck onto this one because I'm in the dining room. 
uh, stuck onto this one and of course there's no chance of that is there although there's plenty of sitting around isn't there of a different kind and it, if we're not careful it's not at all good is it for our mental health and I don't know about you but I'm finding it harder and harder to stay focused you know so I'm thinking about one thing and then immediately I'm thinking about another I am I'm I'm like I'm, my thought process seems to be all over the blooming place <laughs> so uh all Pat says she's check the recording and it's not quite at the beginning but the sermon is in there and it's entire in its entirety in full screen so do let me know if you want me to send it to you so right if you want this morning's service if you email pat there look there she is it's not so pat your sp spruits you need so cancel that email out there what pat's put in because that's not right she needs a p and not an o uh and then uh, she'll put it up again yeah that is she's done it look i'm scrolling now so how do i access the zoom okay so catherine um if you uh look at that email the second one that pat spruits put up and you send uh no you won't find links on this page because we haven't we haven't quite managed that yet that's a, a, a tool in the making so we are planning to link it to the facebook page but we're just sorting out how to do that so for the moment if you have an email catherine man you will be able to uh email um your email so email pat sprout and then we've done it properly and she will send you a link for the morning's service good morning sylvia Mir miller even yes so um it's good to see you here and i'm just watching the conversation i love it you know when you talk to each other on here as well it's really lovely yeah so catherine mann do uh, email spruits at aol that's pat our church warden and uh okay pat can you take that down then? Catherine's uh, email. Can you get that? She is K J T Man with a double N five four at Yahoo dot co dot UK. So it looks like we might well be on Zoom and Facebook. Um uh, very soon that's what we'll say pat and that will keep us on our on our travels won't it so that will keep us going forward because we're only ever going onwards and forwards and upwards so where i got my glasses from these glasses a b and m darling june b and m 199 so and they're all right for me because i only need them for reading i mean i can't see anything without glasses and i guess at some point i'll have to make a trip to the opticians like i used to but for the moment um it's b and m so i usually have three or four around the place actually this is my final pair and when i couldn't find these the other night i was actually having to sell a tape of green pair together that's well, not good anyway i found these again so um b and m my darling they are 2.5 these are because i don't think my sight's that bad i'm sure the opticians among us will go mad but they do me well they do me well so i was thinking about how hard it is to stay focused which is why i like to walk because that focuses me down other people can knit can't they or crochet um I, i've read a tiny little book this morning about hope by max lucado it only took an hour but i found myself you know uh, the promise of hope it was called and that it was just a lovely little book just to encourage you a bit do you want to do you want to find a pen pat and will i will i say it out loud catherine's uh, email and if you pop and find a pen 
and I'll tell you the I'll tell you Catholic Catherine's email. Okay, so these are these are one ninety nine my glasses anyway. So um, tell me when you've got a pen, Pat. Tell me when you've got a pen. And we'll come back. We'll come back to that then. I'll scroll back up after. Okay. <laughs> you make me laugh. I don't want to try to. Oh, bless. Oh. I thought you were 11. Oh, Martin's Hill. Yes, you are that, aren't you, though, Hyacinth? Anyway. Um, butterfly thinking. How hard is it to stay focused? I'm finding it hard to read. I'm finding it hard to sit. Um, I'm turning the telly on. And I'm, like, watching... A series of things. I'm staying up, which is something that I never do, or I fall to sleep downstairs and then go to bed about half past eleven or half past two in the morning. All this butterfly thinking going on. So, um, we'll let that go on. That little. Um, I, I've, tell me when you've got a pen pat, and I'll I'll read it out for you. I will. I'll read it out for you. So. Butterfly thinking will get there in the end, won't we? Um, it just helps you, it, it just makes you feel unsettled, doesn't it? It just makes me feel unsettled. Um, so I keep trying, as I said, I'm trying to walk more, but I, I'm not managing that. You have a pen. Right, excuse me, ladies and gentlemen, if you're there. I'm just going to scroll back up because I just need... Oh, you're emailing Pat now. Okay, as long as that's sorted then, because she's really keen to come and listen to us live, Pat. And that would be great for you to be on board as well, Catherine. So, email Pat now, and then uh, we can scroll after if needs be. So, I'm finding it very difficult. The longer this goes on, the more it is. Uh, I'm watching loads of junk on the uh, telly. You know, because uh, you put a series on and then they leave you hanging, don't they? So you're watching another one and another one. And actually, while I'm doing that, I'm not reading. I'm being distracted. Um, I'm not finding things to encourage encourage me and um, help me to feel hopeful. Now, I know a bit of tell is good because a bit of tell is a good bit of escapism, isn't it? Um, you know, we have to be careful, though, don't we? I have to be careful. So... I'll bring it back to me. So we have to be careful that we're not distracted for too long. Because when we're not, when we've not got, I'm, I'm sure, Anne, I'm sure your head is all over the place. And this is, this is why we need um, Jesus, quite frankly. And this is why we need the Bible. And if you can't um, sit with the book, because lots of people can't, you can listen to it on your phone you can listen to it online you can listen to different people you can go back on the facebook page and you can listen to all those live talks that i've done right from last year right from march if you so wanted uh because there's always just a little thought in there isn't there just to sort of keep you um keep you keep you there you know and thinking about just looking at things differently i mean i tell my children and tell all my family members actually about their phones because even while you're talking to them they're replying to someone aren't they or they're doing something or they've got the phone here and um i'm surprised they don't fall in more fountains to be fair it's no good though is it all that clamor it's just really no good for our mind our body or our spirit and it made me think about a stagnant pond and you know what a stagnant pond looks and smells like don't you so how do we lift ourselves from those stagnant places those places where we can't be bothered those places where you know oh yeah another day another dollar another pajama day i i don't have 
to be fair i don't have pajama days good on you if you can manage one i usually have to get ready to walk the dog so i'm ready in some form and then if i've got other stuff to do if i'm zooming with meetings then i change again so i look a bit like somebody owns me you know by the time we get to the zoom or the live even and um i don't know whether you've been to a um an after school club or you've taken your children to after school clubs we used to do one when i was back in bestwood uh with the youth worker there and uh, we used to play a game with the children that was called stuck in the mud I'd never heard of it before, but um, anyway, it was a great game. There's a load of children and you pick two people to be on and they would run around and dob people, dob, dob, dob. And when you were dobbed, you had to stand with your arms out like that and you had to uh, plant your feet on the floor because that meant you were stuck in the mud and then you'd have to wait until someone got near to you to dob you. Uh, back off so dob was put on you and then the dob had to be taken off before so someone would have to come and rescue you it is i love that idea of being rescued so you were there you were dobbed stuck in the mud and then some kind of person had come along and dob you off and then you'd actually be able to um to, to move along and run around again great game uh, really good physically for the children because he ran them ragged, which was great. And it also means that when the, you're free, aren't you? When you've been dobbed off, when, when they've taken the dob off you, you're free. And that's what Jesus offers us. So when people, when we ourselves and people dob things off, on us yeah like that and then that can make us stand still can't it and be stuck in a place that is not uh, very good that is not good for us because we don't need to stand still we don't need to stay stagnant we need to keep moving forwards onwards and upwards because we need to keep moving and sometimes we can't do that physically so we have to do that spiritually we have to think of a way we're going to move ourselves forward so our bodies may not be able to move very quickly but our minds right and our spirits can do the work in those times when physically we can't do it because god wants us to be whole in body mind and spirit doesn't it it's a three-way thing and I thought, oh, yes, that marries up nicely, doesn't it, with Father, Son and Holy Spirit? Because he wants us to be totally complete, doesn't he? So in Psalm 23, when we've got those stuck in the mud moments, we're reminded that as we walk through the those dark and lonely times, God is there with us to comfort us, isn't he? Every single emotion right that we have ever been through and will go through jesus has been there before us and if you doubt that then i'll go back to what i told you before about being in the garden of gethsemane right and in pleading with his father to take this cup away from me so don't think he hasn't been through all that stuff so we're reminded in psalm 23 that is there to comfort us his rod and his staff you remember the shepherd you know he would have a staff wouldn't they? A rod and a staff to ward off all the nasties, the wolves and whoever else, even people, horrible people that were coming. And so that's what God does for us. He bats them back. He bats them back. And he and he bats them away while we're stuck in the mud. And he says, it's OK. I'm here and I'm going to comfort you. Psalm 46 tells us God is our strength and our refuge. A very present help in times of trouble. So when we're weary and down, we can hide in the shadow of his wings. That's another thing that we can do. Because sometimes we haven't got any energy, have we? Physically or spiritually to move forward. So it's in those times that we sit and we wait. And we hide in the shadow of those wings. And we're just like, just there. And then we can take a deep breath 
and we can start again, can't we? Because Psalm 121, right, which if you were on our Zoom service this morning, the wonderful Ray did a fabulous rendition of Psalm 121. He reminds, Psalm 21 reminds us to lift up our eyes to the Lord because that's where our help comes from. He will actually lift us from those dark places. Every single emotion, hope in this day and age is what we're looking for, isn't it? Hope and our hope for those of us that love Jesus, who has Jesus in their lives, who has Jesus as their friend, our hope is in him. When the butterfly thinking comes along, right, and we get stuck in the mud, that's when we ask Jesus, come on, Lord, I, I have no idea. It's like me at this moment in time. What's to do, Lord? I feel stuck in the mud, quite literally. What, what are we going to do? What are we going to do as a church? How are we going to move forward? How are we going to really just push forward in a way that will be relevant to us as a church and relevant to all those community, all those people from the community that were coming in? How are we going to have that relevance? How? How, how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to be praying hard, aren't we? We must pray hard. Um, you must have, and if you haven't, I encourage you to get onto YouTube right now. She was the talk of the inauguration day, wasn't she? She, Amanda Gorman, 22. If she doesn't inspire hope in you, alongside Jesus, of course, after Jesus, of course, that poem that she read out, when I've, I've copied a little bit, um, where are, well, let me just see. We've learned, she says, that quiet isn't always peace and the norms and notions of what just is and isn't justice. Somehow we do it. Somehow we've weathered and witnessed a nation that isn't broken but simply unfinished. I think that goes for each one of us as well. We are a work in the making. Let's have a look. Uh, we can have Ray's song again next week. You need to speak to Jeff and to uh, Roy. Uh, no, you don't need to speak to Roy. You need to speak to Rod. Um, and, you know... If you want, after Jesus, an inspiration, please go and have a look at that young girl at 22 who was amazing, wasn't she? She was absolutely amazing. Just trying to find that bit about the light because that was a wonderful piece and I want to just... Help us to, you know, doesn't matter what age we are, does it? When day comes, this is the last, uh, one of the pieces in it. When day comes, right, we ask ourselves, where can we find light in this never-ending shade? Because we're all in the shade, aren't we, at the moment? The loss we carry, a sea we must wade. We've braved the belly of the beast. We've learned that quiet isn't always peace and the norms and notions of what just is isn't always justice. And then, the new dawn blooms as we free it for there is always light. If only we're brave enough to see it if only we're brave enough to be it surely that's for each and every one of us isn't it not just when you're 22 and at the president's inauguration that's for us isn't it each and every day being brave pushing forward not getting stuck in the mud not allowing that butterfly thinking to 
just think, I can't think about that, so I'll watch some telly. Find a good book. I could recommend a really good one. It's called The Bible. And you might need help with that. And that's absolutely fine. Good morning, our Ellen. It's good to see you. That's fine. Ask for help. I ask for help all the time. Because I don't know everything about everything. Even though people might think I do. I don't. And no, you're right. We're not all familiar with modern technology. But I'm sure, right... That if someone who is familiar with modern technology, you could say to them, could you print me off Amanda Gorman's poem? And even if you only read that every day, that would be enough for the moment. And then we move on and move forwards. So maybe you would like to see a copy of the poem. Maybe you would like to get out of the mud. Maybe you would like someone to come and rescue you. Ask Jesus. Because I have it on good authority. He will come. And he will dob off all that that has been dobbed on you. And he will raise you up as the song goes. Makes you want to stand on the mountains, isn't it? Which marries nicely with what Philip was talking about for Martin Luther King Jr.'s uh, speech. Yes, of course, we adore those mountaintop moments. But when we're in the valley, we also need a comforter and a friend. Ask Jesus. He will be your comforter and your friend and you are so right Tracy Orte he never fails sometimes it comes a bit of a different way than you expected but what we need is a wonderful message that is full of hope and a hope that will last us for all of our lives and Jesus is that hope I think that's worth a thought don't you Still stay home, still stay safe, and still stay well. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and all those that you love and care for and maybe cannot see at this moment in time because hope springs eternal the Lord be gracious to you and give you his peace we ask for this blessing in the name of God the Father God the Son and God the Holy Spirit Amen take good care good people I'm happy to be here for another moment longer. And lots and lots of lovely comments today and you've spoke to each other and I love that from Catherine. Always light, she says, there is, isn't they, after dark. And you look, uh, last night, no, it wasn't last night, it was Friday night, the sky was amazing. It was as clear as a bell, clear as a bell, it was beautiful. All those stars twinkling it's just fab fab take good care good people we take up a good sunday morning now don't we we do find that poem and if you haven't got access to the internet find someone who has you can always rely on jesus can't you you really can A little bit of coffee left. Take good care, Marion. Thank you, Judy. And you, Brown.
long is everybody else's hair? <coughs> Mine's very long now. I couldn't leave it hanging down like that, though. That's why I'd stick my rollers in. That's why I'd curl it at the ends. It's better curled at the ends. Yeah. <laughs> Bless you, Janet Walker and Phil. Mwah! So good to see you on here. So good. Take good care, Sylvia. Take good care. Oh, got a little question there. Got in just before me. Oh, that's lovely, Jude. You enjoy both things. Your son and your lunch. Yeah, it's a great way of connecting. Until we can get back into that building, this is the way. This is what we're going to do. We're going to keep connecting with Zoom, with Facebook, and hopefully those Zooms, uh, those Zoom services will be able to come on Facebook as well. So I know that the wonderful Pat is trying to um, sort that for us. Bless her. She's a great girl. Oh, I probably ought to say, if you do want a copy of the poem or you haven't got a Bible, you can inbox me and I can get a Bible to you. Or if you want a copy of the poem, I can find that for you too. I can. So, you know, those of you who aren't technically minded or know someone that would really benefit from it, I'm going to have to read that poem again because it really is if only we're brave enough if only we're brave enough to be it it's all in there isn't it it's all in the mix <laughs> it really is <sighs> it's all good so good. Oh, got dinner being prepared in there. Fabulous. Thank you, Pat, as well, for all your hard work this morning. Thank you. Thank you to me, because I think it went not so, um, <laughs> not so very bad, <laughs> really. <laughs> like Pat says, we're not the most professional, we're not the most perfect. But what you get is from the heart. Bye-bye, Lynn. God bless. And you're all fading fast now. I'm supposing you're all thinking about lunch. I am. I've had a banana this morning. So, yeah, I probably need something a little bit more than a banana, don't you think? Because I'm a hard-working girl, you know. <laughs> Take good care, good people. See you Wednesday at 10. Sunday at 10 for a Zoom. And then followed by by me at 11 so any questions direct them to our church wardens <laughs> who at the moment are Pat Sprout and Chris Detley. no no if you've got anything that you need to ask eh, just be very very safe all of you take good care god bless <laughs>